Greetings free thinkers, welcome to the Hogcast. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing fine. I certainly am. Okay, what do we have for you on today's episode? We have for you the travesty of a press conference from Joe Biden. Now you've probably seen it. I've cherry picked some of the most um, awkward moments for you to watch and we're going to go through them and I'll give you my analysis of course bearing in mind at all times that this is the leader of the free world right this is the man who's apparently going to stand up to China okay even though his family has business dealings there now he had taken a very long time to have his first press briefing the only allowed a certain number of journalists out, I believe it was 30, I got told the, the max number he would allow was 30. He only took questions from liberal journalists or liberal hacks, I should say, uh, people who were on his side. And although the Democrats deny it, deep down they know that the mainstream media is on their side. So they were softballing the hell out of him, but still he failed. Now this screenshot you can see on your screen not only did he have cards right to read from because the mainstream media hacks had given him their questions beforehand and he had answers written by other people but as you can see look down here joe biden even needed to have their names and faces so he could remember who is who this is i had a relative who some years ago died from dementia i saw it from beginning to end i know dementia when i see it he needs this is classic treatment that the nurses gave my grandfather when he was at the beginning stages to middle stages of alzheimer's dementia when it starts to ramp up they give you labels coffee tea this that and the other they give you labels so it reminds you who's who and what's what classic dementia so also you can see there's numbers one two that that says three that says one nine eight and there's some more on the other side of the, the sheet of paper that's the order in which he's going to call them i should imagine so anyway but these are all the names and faces of the hacks present. And of course, it goes without saying that he took no questions from conservative media outlets or Fox News in particular. So let's get into the um, actual clips and sound bites. But if you haven't yet, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell and share this video around. That will really help me stay competitive with the bigger channels and hopefully the mainstream media. OK, let's go. Okay, so let's check out this first one. So the best way to get something done, if you if you hold near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to, anyway. So the best. Oh my God, the leader of the free world, the most beloved president of all time, the most popular, clearly. And this is what you got. Best way to get something done if you if you hold near and dear to you that you uh, if you hold near and dear to you and you uh, and Scooby Doo and Dooby Doo and Wooby Woo, um, like to be able to anyway. So the best. So he clearly gives up on his train of thought. He had, and again, this is what I saw with my grandfather, right? He, at the beginning, and this only happened over 11, second, 11 seconds of space and time, right? He starts with something he wants to say, and it just goes like that. Out of his mind. And then he starts talking about Scooby-Doo, who's near to you. And, uh, and then he says, oh, well, uh, anyway, and shuffles onto... Can you imagine... Donald Trump doing this and you know what the um, mainstream media journalists uh, fake news types in the uh, room they had the expressions on their face and their general body language of 
This was a funeral for their beloved leader, the dear leader, right? King Jong Biden. That's the way they saw it. When he failed and tried to laugh it off, they laughed with him. When he said, am I talking for too long? And I'm not making this up. You can watch the whole thing if you don't believe me. When Biden said, am I talking for too long? When he was rambling on, they all in unison said, no, no, dear leader, no. Probably not as exaggerated as I made out there, but they did say all in unison, no. I said, no, carry on talking. We love you, Biden. One of them even got up. One of the most asinine of the uh, propagandists. I believe she's with either MSBC or CNN. I think it's CNN. And she was like, oh, you're a moral man. You're a decent man, Joe Biden. Do you think you will get a fair and honest accounting of his actions from someone like that? I don't think so. I do not think so. Anyway, let's move on to the next clip. Next, we have the question from North Korea, um, or about North Korea, and it's asked by the woman, I believe, was the moderator on the final debate. Although, of course, we all knew, even though she did a good job, admittedly, I can say that, you know, I can always praise um, my ideological enemies, even if they do, you know, I try not to be partisan most of the time. I try and be level-headed. I think that makes us better than the mainstream media. Um, but look, as good a job as she did, we all know she's in the corner for Biden. Of course, they all are. They're, it's a hive mind. So she asked him, the, asked, bearing in mind she had given him the question beforehand, knowingly, knowing that this breaks every rule of journalism and these are consummate professionals mind you quote unquote so she asked him about uh, north korea and his answer he write reads off of a script a note card and he reads it the way a five-year-old would read it if they were asked to stand up in class take a look Mr. President, overnight we learned that North Korea tested two ballistic missiles. And listen to the way she's asking the question, right? She knows. She's asking it very slowly. North Korea. Ballistic missiles. We learned that North Korea tested two ballistic missiles. What, if any, actions will you take and what is your red line on North Korea. Let me say that, uh, number one, uh, UN Resolution 1718 was violated by those particular missiles that were tested, number one. We're consulting with our allies and partners, and uh, there will be uh, responses if they choose to escalate. Um, we will respond accordingly. But I'm also prepared. Uh, um... A man with dementia having the nuclear codes. Just great, America. Right on. For some form of diplomacy. Um, but it has to be conditioned upon the end result of denuclearization. So uh, um, that's what we're doing right now, consulting with our allies. Just very quick. You only got another hour now, okay? <laughs> Diplom. So that's what I mean. Let like they all laugh along. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. You know, it's a it's like a club meeting, but it's got the feel of a um, like someone's just been given the death sentence. It's got the feel of a funeral about it. It's like they're all commiserating. It's something that they had to do that none of them wanted to do. The mainstream media didn't want to ask questions. Joe Biden didn't want to be asked questions. He is can't he doesn't understand what he's doing most of the time. Um, as I said, when she asked that question, she asked it in such a slow manner that demonstrates that really they know. Even though after this, they just kept digging. After the press conference was finished, they went on air on cnn msnbc and they wax lyrical about this was the best press briefing they'd ever seen it brought tears to their eyes 
you know, some of the female reporters were fainting in the back because, you know, they just couldn't contain themselves with joy. It was like a rock star. You know, the way they go on. The worse he performs, the more they wax about how special it was like a second coming of Jesus Christ. Anyway, let's move on to the next. So this is could be described as the exact moment Biden knew he was slam dunked by gonna be slam dunked by conservative media. This is why they refused, his handlers refused to take any questions from conservative media, conservative news, because they knew, bearing in mind this is him responding to an extremely softball question thrown at him by an adoring liberal press. So imagine him responding to a tough question, an important question from conservative news. So he got this softball question and this was his breakdown. So the best way to get something done, if you if it holds near and dear to you that you... Uh, um, it's just the longer clip of the one we saw in the beginning. I'd like to be able to... You know, the Scooby-Doo near and near to you, near and true Scooby-Doo clip. Anyway, I'm, we're going to get a lot done. And if we have to, if there's complete lockdown and chaos as a consequence of the filibuster, then we'll have to go beyond what I'm talking about. So that's gibberish. Imagine, though, if Trump had said something like that, because the liberal media often like to um, mitigate the things that Joe Biden says, or if he says something that's meant to be important and he says it weekly, they try and boost the strength of it. Let's go back and listen to his words and imagine, let's play the game I love to play, which is imagine if Donald Trump had said that, or a conservative in general, but Donald Trump in this instance. Consequence of the filibuster, then what chaos is a consequence of the filibuster? And if we have to, if there's complete lockdown and chaos as a consequence of the filibuster, then... So he's saying, imagine if there's complete lockdown and chaos in the result of them getting rid of the filibuster, which is what the Democrats want to do, despite the fact that it was used primar primarily by them, exclusively in one year by them, uh, under Donald Trump's um, presidency. So he's saying that if there's going to be chaos in his own words lockdown and chaos in the result then so be it then we'll have to go beyond what i'm talking about he will have to go beyond what he's talking about whatever it is he's talking about by the way i don't think anyone really truly knows but he's talking about ending the filibuster and he said and i'm quoting him if there's going to be lockdown and chaos then we will have to go beyond what he's talking about right in other words, they're going to ram through what the hell they like without the filibuster. They don't care what the minority leader in the Senate, in the House of Representatives has to say. They don't care what any Republican has to say. They will do what they want to do. They have all the National Guard, vetted National Guard, to make sure there's no Trump supporters in the, in the Capitol. What is anyone going to do about it, right? That's the, the attitude they appear to be taking. Okay, um, hang on, uh, sorry, oh, Sing Min, it's Kim. That's really disturbing, isn't it, right? So he's bewildered, he's looking around, imagine if a normal person's brain ran it like speed, we'll call it speed one, right? Watch the rest of this clip and just think that this is what a man whose brain is running at speed 0.25 would be maybe 0.50 at the most right at half speed the clock speed of his brain isn't what it used to be we'll have to go beyond what i'm talking about okay um hang on uh sorry oh sing me miss kim so remember the um, at the beginning of this video, I had the screenshot with the uh, numbers next to people's names. It had their faces and their names, so he would be able to remember what per X person looked like and what their name was. Classic 
um, actions people take when a person has been diagnosed with dementia. I know this, I had a family member, my grandfather, who was diagnosed with it, so I know. And I'm sure a lot of other people had as well. It's fairly common for elderly people. So you've got to think about how many people out there are watching this, the leader of the free world, and thinking, oh my god, I recognise those symptoms. Next, and I apologise for the video quality of this one, I didn't take it, but it's only 13 seconds, but that's all you need for him to make, or should I say him to make his bizarre point. China has an overall goal, and I don't criticise them for the goal, but they have an overall goal to become the leading country in the world. The wealthiest country in the world and the most powerful country in the world. So China has a goal to become the leader of the world, the wealthiest, the most powerful. He doesn't criticise them for that. Oh no. In fact, his family, as you probably know, Biden family, got a, quote, interest-free forgivable loan. In other words, a political gift from China. We often see photographs of Chinese... Um, Communist Party officials, when they visit the United States, they always seem to be with the Democrat Party. You often see them, they take photos together. You have to wonder why, and this is the result. You've gone from having a man in Donald Trump who supported the United States at all costs. He was the, the last guard, really. He was the last line of defense. Really, he was Donald Trump. He was... The, um, the, I suppose you could call him the Sunset Emperor. He was right there as the sun was setting on the United States. And he tried frantically to give the United States one more day in the sun. But the brainwashed and the people who have been taught to hate the United States, even when they live within its own borders, borders were hell-bent on bringing the night. And they've brought the night. And now the sun's going to rise on China. And Joe Biden says himself, he doesn't criticise that. And finally, we have a very confused looking Joe Biden informing the adoring mainstream media crowd that he has actually been, despite common belief, in the Senate for 120 years. 120. That's quite impressive. It's filibuster. So fill the filibuster. Um, you know, with regard to the filibuster, I believe... We should go back to a position of the filibuster that existed just when I came to the United States Senate 120 years ago. He wants to go back to the type of filibuster that existed 120 years ago. That's a Freudian slip. This is the guy who gave a long-winded eulogy, eulogy, isn't it? Eulogy at the funeral for um, Bird, Robert Bird, the uh, clan member, okay? Um, I think both these two guys, Bird and Biden, would be well at home in the, in the United States 120 years ago, right? Of course, Biden, according to him, he was already in the Senate back then, yeah? What was that, the 1890s? 1880s? Long time ago. Now, he's that old. And it's beginning to show. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of the video you have watched. Let me know in the comments section below. If you haven't yet, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and share this video around. That helps me stay competitive with the likes of CNN, MSNBC, and the adoring woke mainstream media who just love Biden so much and just cannot stand conservative commentary channels. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.